Hello, and welcome to Castle of Horror, the show dedicated to horror movies and awesomeness. This week, we continue a series of abominable snowman movies with Snow Beast, 1977. This is episode 355. Bear in mind, if you haven't seen today's movie, we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of horror fans who have seen it. So warning, spoilers ahead from Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jason Henderson, publisher at Castle Bridge Media. With me from Austin is Tony Sabaggio, lead singer and bassist of the band Desert of Mars and lead guitarist of the band Rise from Fire. Say hello, Tony. There's no beast like Snow Beast. It's like <laughs> no beast I know. <laughs> Oh, the rare, the rare Tony song. Indeed. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> hey, uh, also, that's been playing in, in my also, head for like two days. That, that's been in your. Yeah, I, I, this, it is impossible. This is going to be a fun movie to discuss because I find it difficult to take this movie seriously. We may find some subtext that is chilling and teaches us something about the culture, but I will not be disappointed if we do not. Um, so, yes. Also in Austin, Mr. Drew Edwards is the writer-creator of the long-running underground comic Halloween Man, currently published by Comixology. He is a Best Writer Ringo nominee, Austin Chronicle Best of Austin Award winner, and a member of the Pen America Fellowship. Say hello, Drew. But we have to think about the Winter Festival. We can possibly <laughs> tell everybody that there's a big cause panic. As you can see, families are having a good time. They're skiing. We're going to. Yes. And finally, also in Denver, color commentary. To this day, this is our 355th episode. I don't even know what it means anymore. Color commentary from Julia Guzman, Guzman Immigration of Denver. Hello. I quit being a skier in 1968 because the other skiers were mavericks. <laughs> Since we're all doing quotes, apparently. <clears throat> I would say okay. mine's more paraphrasing than a yes. than a quote. <laughs> yes, um, I I write down to shooting the wrong shark, you know. Um, okay, Snow Beast, Snow Beast, and I've, I I had seen like the first ten minutes of this movie, and I'd never actually seen the movie before. Uh, Snow Beast is a 1977 American made-for-television horror film starring Bo Svensson, Yvette Mimieux. The, the always in, intoxicating event menu, Robert Logan and Clint Walker. It was directed by Herb Wallerstein from a teleplay written by Psycho's Joseph Stefano. The film originally premiered as an NBC Thursday night movie uh, on April 28th, 1977. That is the month before, that is a mere month before the release of Star Wars, the original Star Wars. In other words, this is a this is a reflection of the last moments of a culture that no longer exists. So, uh, I, I mean, it has nothing to do with that, but I'm just saying that changed every damn movie that came out after that. Uh, I want to get opening thoughts, and we haven't started with Julia in a long time. I, I am dying to hear what each of you will have to say about this film, because I found myself fascinated by it. Um, Julia, let's start with you. Let's go Julia, Tony, Drew, and then I'll do whatever. Julia, uh, Snow Beast. <laughs> so basically, this is the um, the Colorado, um, the Bigfoot version of Jaws. Uh, <laughs> it's filmed in Crested Butte, which we have been to, a lovely part of the state. Um, apparently, it was very, 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 very cold when they were filming. Like It never got above five degrees. So Goodness gracious. The, even in the... Uh, when they're in the hot tub, which are the hot, the heated pool, uh, apparently their hair kept freezing, which made they're which too big for a hot tub. These two men, yeah, could not fit yeah, it, it was it was a it was a, a heated pool, but yeah, but their hair was freezing while they were doing scene. I I can't <laughs> understand people who get into um, hot tubs and heated pools outdoors in Colorado in the winter because you have to get out. <laughs> You have to get out of the thing and it's like yeah. torture. But anyway. Um, so this this little film, a very short and sweet little film, uh, is enjoyable to watch. It's it's you know, it's definitely not scary <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, although there are moments of suspense. But, you know, it's some beautiful gosh, like I say, you know, it's it's Colorado, so it's beautiful. And um some fun relationships and performances so it's an entertaining hour plus hour and 20 hour and a half um but uh you know it's not like gonna go down in my memory as being like one of the best films i ever saw or anything so um 
trying to think what other note I wanted to make. There was something when you were introducing it that crossed my brain and then it immediately went away again. So I'll, I'll think of it and come back. Alfred to Hitchcock, Psycho, Star Wars, Robert no, Logan. It's, it's okay. Okay. First, just go go on. I'll I'll come back to it whenever my. All right, Tony. Whenever we get I, there. I don't know if you've seen this movie, but we have watched a lot of a lot of forgotten films on Tubi that just pop up, and you're like, "Wow, where did this come from?" Like that one with Barbara Bach, where there's like an island of 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 sea creatures, and and like the the castle that's guarded by an old colonial French scientist. This is in a way. This is a random weird film like that, and and I'm just dying to to know uh, what you thought. So, Tony, what are your thoughts? I mean, I'd say it's even more random than that because that one had like a you know VHS release, etc. So, made for TV movie. It's kind of like a made for TV movie. You can tell because of the way they fade in and out. Yes, which is always <laughs> like a tell. Except they fade to red a lot in this one instead of black, which is interesting mm. to add to the horror. I think that also it's worth mentioning the. Part of the way we get to Snow Beast, not just Jaws, right. but the way we get to Snow Beast is Bigfoot mania that was going on. Yeah. Uh, In Search of had Bigfoot. Bionic Man had a Sasquatch for Bigfoot. The Hulk was with Bigfoot. Like there yeah. was, for some reason... In this era, we all, everybody was going Bigfoot crazy. Well, in fact, I want to, when we get into the talk, I want to spend a little time on y'all's time thinking about Bigfoot back in the day. Like, like what, what, because I I think that's a really, really good point that it fits into that culturally. So, you know, you can see the pitch. Hey, we got to cash in on this. And also Jaws, why not? Right. (laughs) And again, it gives everybody an excuse to go up to a ski resort and, you know these ski resort things so i i enjoyed it i love schlocky made for tv movies uh i will watch probably an infinite number of them <laughs> i think this is why and we are friends because that yeah. i i feel the same way <laughs> like it is the, the editing the score there's i mean I, i'm sure part of it's nostalgia but just if you again if you want to see this is where we're at this is an era I think yeah. even more than than Phil, like theatrical releases. And I've talked about it before. And part of it's because it's there to sell ads. So you there's a whole there's a whole machine behind making made for TV movies that are sort of topical uh, or willing to cash in on a craze. Yeah. You know, there's that's why there's the Lee Majors Piranha movie. Oh, it's got who has a piranha movie? Make a piranha movie, right? Like there's yeah. all of that. And they tend to be so uh, I don't know if populist is the right word, but they're bit they they're basically there to cash in on whatever's hot, give me one of those. Yes. And sure. it can't be too violent. It's it's got but it's got to be made a certain way because it has to be TV standards, all this stuff. And I'm just fascinated by all of that. I think it's great. Um, this movie is not a great movie as far as classic, you know, it's not a Hitchcock movie, but it's it's pretty enjoyable to see also, you know, filmmakers doing what they have with the budget mm-hmm. and the way they have to deal with standards and practices. Yeah. So it can't be too violent. And how do we get, how do we do all of that? But I mean, you'll, I, if I remember correctly, you see more Bigfoot in that, uh, the Bionic Man episode. Than oh, you absolutely. <laughs> in this yeah. one. Uh, but, but the difference is this one's way more Yeti like, uh, which is, is cool. Um, that's true. But yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this movie, uh, just for its schlocky goodness, which I, like I said, I'll watch an infinite amount of good TV schlock. Give it to me. <laughs> Shoot it right in my veins. I'm good. And there was so much yelling at the screen for me. Why? Why are you going there? What? No. Why are you going by yourself? Why are you going that direction? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot. There's there's even more closer to the end that I want to get into when yep. we yeah. hit the, the third act proper. Yep. Uh, very good. By the way, I was I was just before before we go to Drew, I just wanted to mention that in the month before, in the theaters, what what people have been seeing, February brought us Suspiria and In Search of Noah's Ark, uh, and March brought us Airport seventy seven and uh, Black Sunday, the 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 thriller movie, and the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And then uh, this this month was Annie Hall and Audrey Rose, which we've done on this show, and um, so that's the that's the world that this is that this is coming into. You did <laughs> make that's, that. why, that's why this movie didn't make, didn't get an Oscar. You think? Right. It had... Well, this was on in my brain though. Now I'm, I'm picturing I'm picturing some combo of Airport seventy seven, but a big yes. Oh, yeah. write airline. that down. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bigfoot <laughs> air. Lava, lava shark production. Write that down. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Air Force 77. Terror in the Big sky. Foots. Big oh terror in the sky. Sasquatch <laughs> 77. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Drew, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts? I, I actually, you know, I, I kind of thought that you might dig this because I know you like, you like cryptids. So, um, but, but yeah, so where did you come down on this? Well, I mean, you know, as everybody has said, my, my reaction, my first reaction is this is very much, um, and I don't mean this in a demeaning way because there's lots of fun that are made in this mold but this definitely is a creature on the loose movie in the mold of jaws it just happens to be in okay. colorado yeah. with a bigfoot instead of a giant shark but it's 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 essentially the same storyline as jaws um yeah. and i again i'm not mean saying that to be derogatory because i i think this is a pretty fun you know guy in a rubber suit monster movie um you know it's it's not heavy on like a lot of character development or anything like that but in, in fact there were times i wondered if you cut out some of the skiing montages if it actually would still be feature length yeah but it's, um <laughs> That's the truth. you know another thing i appreciated by it though other than the fact that it was a, a cryptozoological creature feature is that it's a movie where the quote-unquote young characters are actually all like middle-aged people with some like history oh yeah and, there's some great soapy business yeah going on yes and i love a lot I of soap love opera kind of good stuff like a lot of character bits that are that are pretty great actually yeah, yeah. and i love i love all that that kind of um that kind of stuff like the the unrequited love things and um you know it is very much of a time because it's it's like the 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 wife is like oh well i love my husband but he's not enough of a man for me right, right. now like he's not even being though aggressive enough or whatever yeah even though you know. he's like built like the incredible hulk <laughs> <laughs> but uh be yeah. that as it may you know like i i guess seeing her seeing him kill a bigfoot will probably re restart her the fire in her loins but uh yeah <laughs> it does exactly it's... that yeah. when he yeah. fights off the bigfoot she's totally goes well i'm i'm reconciling with my my six foot six 275 pound <laughs> Man, that guy, right. the 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 husband really has, um, like, he's pretty easygoing dude because I swear, like, right after, uh, I forget their names, the characters' names, but right after the brunette guy tells her that he loves her, he then asks, um, it's uh, the, the did, Tony. Tony is the the old friend who owns the ski resort. Yeah, I gotta go. And to Gar the is the is the Olympic so champion who's Bo, come to the Bo ski Svensson, resort. Bo Svensson, which is another one yes. of Jason's um, man crushes. Um, but he's another. Sure. Why person. not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, so so Gar, you know, sees that Tony is hitting on his wife, and Tony has just told her that he he, he actually still loves her, and then Tony goes, "Hey, so how are you? At, how's your marksmanship?" And I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> he's about to kill you, you know? Like you're still gonna not survive this movie. He's still and it, gonna and it, yeah, for sure." His, his, res his response <laughs> isn't. Well, let's go see. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> like, he is so lucky let's, that let's this be, guy is let's cool. Let's be honest, though. If if Bo Svensson, am I saying this right? Yeah, yeah. Bo Svensson, yeah. If he wanted to kill that guy, he would not need, need a, a gun. Need a he, yeah. he can no, rend him to apart. Like far away, you know? He could just yeah. punch his head like Jason. That's so true. He could yeah. make yeah. it look like the, like the snow beast got to him. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, this guy oh, was ripped goodness. apart like a phone book. I don't understand. Well, just like <laughs> because <laughs> oh, like man. he's he's gigantic the way like he's conspicuously big the way like when they try to pass arnold schwarzenegger off as like a normal person <laughs> like like I, I i just watched because you know it just was christmas and jamie and i watched jingle all the way where like i like, cast arnold schwarzenegger as like average american dad like <laughs> You know, and he's this gigantic Austrian bodybuilder. This yeah. is like the same vibe. Like, right. yeah, like every, everybody else is like a semi-normal looking being. Yeah, this dude, so this dude is 6'6", six, six, the other dude is 6'3", and the poor woman is 5'4". I'm just like, yes. this is just... 
and, and, and not for nothing, but the the, uh, the the really wonderfully baritone voiced sheriff that they hang out with, who's played by, you know, Western star Clint Walker. Clint Walker is also six foot six. So these, this, this posse. Land of the dance. <laughs> Well, if you're gonna take down a Bigfoot, you you need a big crew. You need giants. Well, what I was what, what I yeah. kept saying when we were um when we were watching it is uh the Bigfoot's like, oh good, the town is unguarded now. I can go eat. I can go eat because all the giants are up here. <laughs> oh my goodness! That's yeah, it, it, but it, but what I like about it is it's actually really good casting because part of the whole thing we mentioned and we can get into it you know, depending on where we go, but part of his wife's whole thing about, well, he's not quite the person that I married is his kind of fall from grace. Like she married an Olympian. Yeah. He's no longer an Olympian. Um, and so it adds to that whole thing of, you know, here's this huge guy and he's always going to be huge, but they're what made him the person that she knew is smaller. Yeah. And I think, you well, know, well, let's just start talking that's about all the that soapy. There's, that's all yeah. the kind of soapy business that's in there. That's actually, uh, you expect to see it, especially from TV movies of the time and TV in general, uh, of this era. And well, because I mean, we when still you don't get have it, money... but it's, it's, it feels the way the relationship is and the dialogue, like there's definitely, it, it fits right. Like this is late seventies. Yeah, to it's team. Dallas kind of stuff, right? I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if Dallas was literally on in 1977. I, I don't remember, and I apologize. But but it's it is it's and and that's the thing with if you're if you're making Reservoir Dogs and you don't have money for like big action scenes, what you do have money for is dialogue, you know, and and relationships and, and stuff like that. And right. that's and that's true here too. Um, well, wait, did, Drew, did you finish your opening thoughts? Uh, nothing that we can't. I have right. other stuff, but I'm sure it'll get covered throughout. So the let's do let's do these things. All right, this is what I recommend. By the let's way, Jason, with... Dallas started in 1978. Okay, so we're nearly we're nearly to Dallas. Um, let's start with the characters, and then I would like to double back and talk about where we are in the timeline of Bigfoot fascination. Because <clears throat> I think that's fascinating, but the characters in the story. So, so yes, Tony, you you laid it out, which is uh, I think actually one of the most mature things I've ever even heard. The notion that this uh, this married couple have come to the uh, ski resort that is run by their we have to assume extraordinarily rich friend uh, Tony. And he used to be in love with the spouse who thanks Tony okay. for offering uh, Gar Seberg, uh, you know, Bo Svensson, a job. And it's very, very mature in the fact that she – all of this is really wild, by the way. And, and I, I – I, you know, where everybody's just talking out loud about their relationships all the time, which is really wild. She's like, I, I'm not really – I don't respect him. And so in her world, you know, she really needs to respect him to be in love with him. And so he's like, well, you know – um, I'm respectable, and I and I own a ski resort. And, and although he doesn't own the ski I'm resort hot. yet, <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, but he's Fair. the heir, heir apparent. Yeah. He's the heir, yes, because his mom still owns it with an iron. Grand, gr his grandmother. Oh, it's his grandmother. I'm so sorry. I, I, yeah, yeah, it's his grandmother, and she's okay. One right. one thing. This was the one opening thought that I I didn't I forgot. I it's I love that the owner of the ski resort is played by. The actress that plays Juno, the caseworker, and Beetlejuice, huh. and she looks yep. exactly yep. the same. Yes, yeah, she does. A yeah. decade before yeah. Beetlejuice, Sylvia Sydney. That that like... doesn't surprise me because weirdly enough, she's only and I say only, but Julia, what? How did you work out how old Sylvia? No, Sydney she is? says I'm 66, and I was like, really? And then I looked her up, and sure enough, she was 66 when the, when the movie so... was made. So she so, looks like a seventy-seven-year-old person. But then, but then, I guess by the time Beetlejuice comes along, she still looks that age. So that's the so benefit of looking yeah. older than your age when you're younger <laughs> is that you don't age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and and you know, I, look, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to criticize because I should be so lucky, right, as to as to look as good as her and getting getting excellent jobs and when I'm sixty. Well, honestly, I, I think mean, the reason she looks older is just because, she, unlike a lot of uh, women, including myself, uh, she does not die her gray hair so right. um she uh she just looks gray and so but actually if you look at her face and she wears a lot of makeup so uh but if you look at her skin it's not that she looks like super old it's just that she doesn't dye her gray hair and she wears a lot of makeup so uh yeah so she does look exactly like she looks in Beetlejuice. so <clears throat> um but anyway we've got this 
this wonderful uh, love triangle going. But what I really kind of like about it, it reminds me of a lot of like war movies. This is the kind of thing that Mad Magazine used to, used to make fun of, where the two officers who fly together are both in love with the same woman. And one usually inevitably actually sacrifices himself at the end of the movie, you know, like knocks the guy out before he goes on the dangerous bombing run so that the other one will live to, to marry the girl. Um, and that doesn't happen here. You really expect that Robert Logan is probably here. Not we get rid of the sheriff instead. We do, which is totally not. Yeah. Anyway, so they, they're going to get out of this movie, the three of them, and I guess they're just going to keep continue. I guess that Robert Logan is going to keep macking on Bo Svensson's wife. Maybe they'll become a thruple. Could be. Yes. Sure. Why not? It's up to really. It, I guess it's up to Yvette and all Bo. of them. <laughs> yeah. And then, that's when <laughs> they start them. the spinoff series, Bonded by. <laughs> <laughs> bonded by Bigfoot. Oh my God! Last that sounds one season in '78. <laughs> didn't, didn't really go anywhere. You know what would be great is you could write a fake book that was a fake like no, uh, TV novelization to go along with an episode of this long lost television series, and that would be so great. You know, you could totally yeah. do that. What's that? What's that Mandela effect thing where you're just like make people great? You right. know, don't you people gaslight remember? People, gaslight people into <laughs> thinking that existed. So funny. So a word about um, so Yvette Mimu is um, she was in the Time Machine. I mean, this is a, a sort of 1960s sex kitten who uh, she was in Where the Boys Are. I mean, she was in uh, just she was all over the place. Um, she was the lead in Delta Factor. She is uh, alive. I mean, she's only 80 years old. She lives in L.A. So uh, so Yvette Mimu is still with us. Uh, Bo Svensson is still with us. So this cat is interesting. He, I first became aware of Bo Svensson because he played one of the best villains on Magnum P.I. Uh, he, he was uh, the, the Russian colonel who held Magnum captive in Vietnam. And uh, it was, he was the lead of this, this two-parter that is really famous. And everybody always says, that's my favorite one because of, because of several things that I don't want to spoil, but he was really, really good. But the guy was, is Swedish. And then he came to the United States in his teenage years. And I guess he became an American. And then he joined the United States Marines and they got out of the Marines and he did uh, movies and he starred in two of the walking tall movies, which are about, um, this sheriff who you know beats up criminals and stuff like that and i and I, I need to see those because they're classic exploitation pictures but you know he's just fascinating to look at drew you point out that he's giant it, physically like why and they, they put him in these giant yellow suits that just make him look like bigfoot himself to me yeah but um he never quite looks this big again like when you get to him in magnum pi 10 years later he's quite trim you know and, he, and he's in a three-piece suit and he looks normal so i don't know what he the hell built like a like a professional skier he looks like he should be playing football yes like he he's that like he, he, or a pro wrestler or something yeah he's like super duper just... broad i mean yeah. really really broad uh, it, it's it's it, it is you you can't you can't not observe especially when they do something hilarious like have him sit down in the booth at a restaurant <laughs> And he just sort of, he just sort of curls into it like the Hulk. <laughs> I, anyway, I I love that. Or he'll he'll sit into a car, and the car just visibly sinks towards the. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Robert Logan. Uh, and I don't know anything actually about Robert Logan. I apologize. I need to. So, if anybody has anything about him, uh, great. But if not. We can move on. And Clint Walker, of course, the, the thing that I would point out about him is he has an amazing, amazing voice. Just amazing. Um, Robert Logan's still alive, by the way. He also is 80 years old. So, so good genes among these guys. Um, yeah. Wow. All three of the leads in this movie are alive. That is, that's kind of unbelievable to me. So... Well, it's the 70s. It's not the 30s. Well, I suppose that's true. But I mean, I'm always shocked when I when I watch like like a, a TV horror movie, you know, and, and then I, I find out that that's, you know, it, that there's nobody left except for the teenager or whatever. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Robert Logan was also T.R. Sloan in uh, Man Death Called Ray Sloan. 2000, which we get, yeah. Well, in the Death Ray 2000. Right. T.R. Sloan. Right. Uh, and there's also a whole on, oh, 77 Sunset Strip. I'm so embarrassed so, that I forgot that he was on that. Yeah. Death Ray 2000 
is a, definitely a was a classic of going among my at least <laughs> my stepbrothers and I. Yeah, because you know it had a death ra- it had a James Bond death ray and it was on TV. So well, Tony, I'm not cool against that? us watching Death Ray 2000. If 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 you want, I mean that's more of a side thing. It's not really horror. But... <clears throat> uh, no, I mean we'll find an excuse eventually because you know we could fit it somehow with the man from Atlantis and just talk about speculative uh, yeah. fiction of the late 1970s. You know, yeah. you'd be surprised right. what we can what we can pull off. Um, OK, so um, I have not done a lot of studying of Bigfoot, but Tony, you said it exactly right. Drew, I know that you're pretty Bigfoot fascinated. Um, I remember that there's Legend of Buggy Creek, which was like 1975. Uh, but like they talk about Bigfoot in this movie in ways that you would think that everybody's been reading research papers about it. So like, yeah. Yeah. But well, in search of Bigfoot, cause in search of was our big, like mm. touchstone, you know, weird stuff, documentary show. I, I love that show as a kid so much, yeah. <laughs> but um, in search of Bigfoot is 76. So that okay. documentary is out. And then $6 million man with the, the Bigfoot episode 76. I looked it up. So for whatever reason, in this like two or three year period, I probably, I must've caught the in search of stuff on reruns though. Cause, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely... you know, there's a whole thing with, with, uh, there was a fascination with cryptids, especially Bigfoot yeah. in the, this era, you know, seven. I, I was, I remember going out, walking around looking for Bigfoot. I know that sounds dumb, but it's true. When I was like six or seven, I would go into the woods behind our house and look for Bigfoot. So also because parents did not pay attention. See, and I would have been yelling yeah. at the screen at you. I would have been going, what are you doing, kid? Come on, go back home. <laughs> just blows my mind. We you just... know, I, I talk about the fascination of, of Bigfoot. Like, I like I, I think I also, like, because, you know, I was born in the late 70s. So, like, I, I think I must have also seen the In Search of stuff in Rerun. But I definitely yeah. saw it because, like, my brothers and I would make fun of any time they would do, like, a Bigfoot or Yeti episode. Much like how they kind of filmed the Snow Beast in this movie. Right. They would have, like, like the POVM and, like, a guy in monster hands, like, pushing yes. through brush. And he would make noises, right. like, <laughs> and, and we would we would make fun of that. We would be, like, in search of Bigfoot. And we would start doing that. Oh, but, that's great. Um, but the really cemented like what i was in my interest in cryptids was um national geographic of all things put out these like hardbound books that my my mom got for me and like only one of them was not weird fringe science because like there was a book on dinosaurs which anybody who listens to the show enough knows i love dinosaurs yeah but uh, they had a book on Bigfoot, a book on ghosts, a book on the Loch Ness Monster, a book on aliens, and a book that was a joint thing about vampires and werewolves. So, like, it was all these different quote-unquote monsters and mysteries, and that may have been what it was called. But, um, again, one book of actual, like, quote-unquote science and the rest of it, like, this this weird esoterica stuff. Yeah. But, like, any time we would go to anywhere remotely mountainous like we were always like let's go on a bigfoot hunt we're gonna find bigfoot <laughs> oh absolutely yeah i i i don't i didn't even know why that captured everybody's imagination and and i wonder if maybe the reason it doesn't now is that our world seems it, it's it's hard to envision but it seems like over the last 40 years we no longer feel that there are unknowable parts of our physical world except is, for in the parts that are so small that you can't see them which um, is actually bunk, by the way, because they discover new animals still all the time. Absolutely, of course, especially um, in the sea. My goodness, yeah. there's so many sea creatures that are like for sure. No, for sure. But what's? Yeah, but I, I, I think that must be it, though. Is there's a feeling that I, I this doesn't capture people's think, information. No, but people I think you're wrong. I think skept- that. I th- I think, I think people that are more that it skeptical capture though. Their, their attention. Mm. I think they do. I think there's plenty. If you get on YouTube, I guarantee you there's going to be several YouTube channels devoted to people hunting Bigfoot. I guarantee it. Just Hulu, like there are Hulu. if there's anything else. Just put out that one documentary. I mean, admittedly, it also had a true crime element to it, but it also very much was about Sasquatch. So, like, well, it, I mean, you know, Lyle Blackburn uh, of yeah. Ghoul Town, Ghoul Town is. You know, switch from 
full time ghoul town or you know i guess what how how much full time you can be as a musician to cryptids wow well, Luckily okay. He does both because he's yeah. There's awesome, ghost but... hunting shows. There's all kinds of stuff. So I think oh. I think there's still plenty of people who are okay. Right. So fair. I so do, it could just I do be... think people are more skeptical now because like I do right. see, especially with like a lot of the YouTube channels that I subscribe to, because there's a definite <coughs> um, crossover between cryptid fandom and paleontology fandom. A lot mm-hmm. of the YouTube channels do both. And the, when they cover cryptids, they definitely come at it through a more skeptical lens than something like In Search Of. So I do think mm. that there is perhaps a more inherent, you know, maybe it's because we're more cynical now. I don't know, but there is a more Can... skeptical. But, so... you know, in the, look, I will say this Bigfoot, if we're going to go plausibility of cryptid, of the, the two big the two big cryptids which is the Loch Ness Monster. Wait, can you give us a working definition of cryptid so that we know what you mean by cryptid? Okay, yeah, sorry. A cryptid is, first of all, cryptozoology, which is the study of unknown animals, which is broadly more popularly defined as things like the abominable snowman, the Loch Ness Monster, uh, Bigfoot. Uh, A cryptid is a proposedly, uh, a mythical beast that might, thought might actually be real and a good example of a a cryptid that ended up being real was is like it does happen sometimes like uh the, the giant squid is a really mm-hmm. good example of of something that was thought to be only a legend and ended up being something that's very real um that being said as i'm using if you were to look at the two most famous cryptids which is the loch ness monster and bigfoot bigfoot is actually the more and i'm using this term loosely so nobody you know on online define me as a crackpot mind Mm -hmm. you um bigfoot is more plausible than the Loch Ness monster. Like the 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 odds of a um prehistoric marine reptile being able to survive in a Scottish lake and not seen are are, are much more unlikely than there being some yet undiscovered ape running right, around right. North. Yeah. yeah, running around North Africa. Because again, um, there's a lot of wilderness that humans just don't spend a lot of time in. Like you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I believe, like, I'm one of these people that I'm always like, I neither believe nor disbelieve in these sure. things. I'm just fascinated in the topic of it. But if a which cryptid out of the famous cryptids do I have the easiest time be- believing in, I would definitely say Bigfoot has the, has the edge over the Loch Ness Monster. Um, so, so this movie, uh, when, uh, yeah, so, uh, Actually, Tony, I think you were going to, um, you had a, a thought about Bigfoot as well. And then I wanted to, yeah, and then, to take us back to the to what the Bigfoot is doing. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Well, also remember that the famous Bigfoot movie, you know, grainy Bigfoot film that we that kind of launched a lot of this is 67. Where he lopes R- along. Roger Patterson. In, the, in, yeah, yeah, the Patterson Gimlin film is 67. So we're seeing this kind of re- like cyclical, hey, what about that? Kind of bringing it back mm. um, to the point where <laughs> even in the movie, uh, you know, both Vincent goes, oh, my wife did this thing on Bigfoot. I, I also like that even though his best friend is, you know, hitting on his wife or at least going, hey, remember back when throughout <laughs> it, Gar is constantly like pretty, uh, he he digs his, you know, he may not like all the time away and, and stuff, but he's he's supportive of his wife, who's a journalist, and, you know, brings that and up. And he like, knows yeah. about her career. But yeah, I, yeah. I can't tell you how, how like, kind of unusual it is that he can cite things off her resume. I know that that sounds like I, I must have very low expectations, but, but that's a big deal. <laughs> he knows the stuff that she's written. Um and he's careful yes. about it where he needs to be careful and brags about it when he thinks he should yeah. brag about it. I, I think that I was like, wow, that's kind of actually pretty yeah, cool. Good point. I think it's it's the lowered expectations also of the era, right? And especially coming through from the 60s where, yeah, that's cool that you are have a career, I guess. A lady journalist. <laughs> the, the, like, the, he's, the little, he's the little woman, the little woman <laughs> yeah. has her little side gig, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's uh, successful at what she does and he's pretty proud of that mm-hmm. wonderful i thought that was cool man although although like she's probably also supporting them both from the sounds of things 
Yes. Yeah, which again goes into the soapy <laughs> parts of why she's more likely. Yeah, I, I remember the Olympian I married kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it it is a it's a it's a slightly ter- for such a lightweight movie. It's a slightly terrifying look at a marriage because she's really sa- she says you know essentially that I'm not attracted to him because uh, he hasn't figured out what he wants to do with his life after he stopped being a star. You know, and that's that's a lot. That's a lot to own up to. Uh, in a 90 minute movie about people hunting Bigfoot. But, um, you know, I can dig it. Uh, You know, the other movie I wanted to mention that this reminds me of plot wise, because this begins with a couple, although they're, they're, um, it's, it's two women are out skiing and then one of them gets eaten by an off screen monster. I, Uh, I love that her friend basically just abandons her. (laughs) Like that is like, I don't think they realized or maybe they did how like cynical and awful that 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 comes off as but it's it is very real because i think you know you think about like the fight or flight reaction sure like if somebody sees well, a and, giant bigfoot come out and start eating their friend they probably would bail well and also and here's where we're, we're gonna give a little bit of skiing insight um, if you take off because of something and start going down the hill, it is not easy to come back up the hill. So if you right. realize that your friend is not right behind you, it's not something you can just kind of go, oh, whoops, I got to go back and check. You can't ski back uphill. You have to climb. So even right. if she went after her, she wouldn't be able to get up there. So plus she's like, what am I going to do? So I feel like that was kind of realistic. What was not realistic is that number one, the creature would be hanging out and because they're, they're in these very wide open um slopes and it, that would be to me maybe like the either green or blue and, and those things would be full of people especially during this winter festival there's no humans but it's clearly like the ski slopes these are not back these are not they're not backcountry skiers these are the ski slopes the nobody's there and the creature's hanging out there and i'm like the creature would not be hanging out in this wide open spaces you, where you missed the, the part be. see we when we didn't see is the part where the creature put up the signs that right. closed right no after the <laughs> This uh, right after definitely the not Sasquatch here. No, no Yetis. Uh, also, also head, to, they, head to these other ones. They actually, actually postulate the theory that this might be a mutant Bigfoot. So if his behavior is not like but it's because yeah, it's a they, they do say that. Bigfoot. So when I, the, when I the... just thought they just didn't know what the hell to call it. And they said mutant because it's definitely, I mean, but they never say Yeti. <laughs> They actually don't well, really so what right. is what is up with this creature right. by the way uh, like like we just saw it eat one girl and so before we get on to the rest of the plot uh in a way it's acting like the giant gila monster that you know that's killing people and and some people are investigating it but what is this creature is it first of all it is smart because it can you know Great it can track them into town it can um you know like knock things down on on you and and uh and luckily it, luckily for us it also didn't turn out to be a scooby-doo plot where it was that's what i was saying know, i actually said old that man jenkins like oh he's a bigfoot yeah, yeah or he doesn't he doesn't like the winter the festival, festival. Yeah, like person. by the <laughs> yeah. yep. by the ski resort i would have bought that ending by the way i actually totally would have would have been satisfied if that had turned out to be the case if if it was you know an an evil guy who wants to take over the ski resort and he has some trained bobcats or something um that's a good ending you could you could write that but yes can anybody tell me i don't know if you could do that now because we've had like a thousand scooby-doos but well this is true but at the but 77 (laughs) perhaps (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh he also can plan He, he at one point comes down when they wander away to hunt him he goes down to their uh truck and tries to destroy their skis Although he doesn't, he doesn't succeed. He's not like, he's not like really brilliant. Oh, and he stashes body parts in the, in the loft section of an old barn. That is the part, guys, did I imagine this? Is there a point when Gar and, and, and Ellen are in the barn and and they knock a whole damn torso out of the loft? I've never seen a severed torso on a primetime movie. 
that was really wild. I, Some I, of I, the I, sordid details of this movie surprisingly grisly yeah. like because like we're doing they're describing yeah. the the girl's head they talk about how it's been Just chewed out until it yeah like basically it's been chewed out till it was hollow so Ugh. like even though they can't show thing they're describing it in a way that if you think on it too long you're going to be a little bit disturbed yes which is which is good that's some good screenwriting well, and the it's fact really that they is. have that little kid that boy discover that first body the body with the no fate with the head right. uh, with the face missing it's a kid that discovers that body that was oh, so yeah. disturbing <laughs> oh, he goes yeah. in he goes into the thing and the dad goes whatever the kid's name was hey billy what are you doing billy just waves and he goes inside i'm like that's not an answer billy you little shit come back here <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes back out and he's just like why is she he's like holy shit yeah i well i gotta say by the way when they start investigating and and running around and most of the most of the first half of this movie is is our our heroes just sort of hanging out and then and then investigating and slowly but surely working their way up to investigating a long well, lots of sheriff. lots of ski montage lots, lots of skiing of, i should probably have told the police this but right. i'm gonna we can't ruin the uh amity not the winter I mean, festival a ski, resort, a ski resort festival <laughs> they need they need the income from the winter festival of course they do i think it, i Sorry, think if amity. people want to watch this movie really honestly the um the high school auditorium band thing where they are crowning the 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 princess is to me it sells the whole thing because i just love these clothes i love this is the gayest thing i've said on the show honestly but i, I i'm I, gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say uh i i, I it's it's it has competition right. go ahead <laughs> but i love the clothes <laughs> it is it, you know the, the, everything the, you know the bell bottoms the the flannel the the the, the uh locality of it because like oh like for no instance, it yeah uh, jason I, it's like 10 minutes into this movie i'm like yeah. oh this, surely jason's seen this this is one of the most jason things <laughs> like all of it from skiing yeah because often I mean, even oftentimes you told me like oh you should come up and go skiing we should go skiing and i go no i hate the cold it sounds more <laughs> like the, the hanging out in the lodge part sounds amazing Yes. Like, now you're going to be worried about if there is, uh, you know, a Bigfoot, Bigfoot yeah. running around. No, you no, know why? I, mean, I don't have not, to worry about any of that because I don't have I to don't, go to the mountains. I don't mean to talk. I don't mean to talk out of turn, but um, Drew, you've encountered ghosts here, so I think I think we have more. Yeah, <laughs> we have more things to worry about than Bigfoot. Right. Well, I but mean, it, we yeah. can always end end with end up with a big like a like a versus Jason situation where two supernatural creatures have to battle it out with Tony and Jason in yeah, the middle. Yes, there yes. <laughs> There's, sure. I, I, the, but it is I, a super, it's, it, this is an extremely Jason movie in, yeah, it in is all true, the best yeah. ways I can think of. I, I love, this movie like, will live rent free in Jason's brain for the rest <laughs> of eternity. I knew, I knew that there was a chance that it would be like that because I had not seen it, but like I'd started, I'd probably watched the first 10 minutes of it years ago and just kept it. I, I clocked it in my head as like probably something that I would think. But I mean, it's so perfect. And, and like all the skiing stuff, the, the great thing about that is you're seeing with faces on cameras, you're seeing like these actual actors, Bo and Yvette and Robert and, and the guy who plays uh, Thomas Babson, who plays uh the the one who gets his face grabbed by the by the yeti the ski patrol guy. Yeah. they do their own skiing and you see them skiing sideways mm -hmm. backwards occasionally falling for no reason you know um downhill skiing like you name cross it country, yeah. cross country skiing tree skiing i mean they do all of it yeah and these are actual stuff. human actors drawing pay to be in this movie and they are out there like bo svensson does not wear a helmet, you know, and he's like, he's moving fast. I mean, did anybody moving... back then? I, yeah, I don't think not. any of them wears I, a helmet, I, but, um, but yeah, yeah, Bo was in, like, he's skiing in the trees. He's skiing really, he skis really well. I was really impressed with his skiing. I mean, I don't know if you just expect Swedes to ski. I, I, I couldn't tell you, you know? I think if you don't <laughs> ski in Sweden, you're missing out because. I mean, admittedly, he grew up in Atlanta, so whatever. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. By the way, by the way, though, I accidentally said Amityville and I meant Amity, but I do in the future, Amity, yeah. I, I, I now have a bucket list thing where there's somewhere I want to have Amity Ski Resort 
that is basically just yeah. the combo and, Hell yeah. and homage to this. Well, but the also, <laughs> Jason pointed out when we were watching it, he says at first it's Jaws, but then it turns into the giant Gila monster once they go to high school. Yes, sure. Because right. it busts through the window, just like the giant Gila monster, you know, as the MS3 3K gear characters just says blah blah because it just like like goes <laughs> Lord said die children die blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so funny oh my goodness um yeah so okay uh it's it's difficult to let's see so what am what am I missing they're investigating the winter festival is coming up Gar has a job now as uh something with the ski resort it's not really clear other than immediately the the boss lady um sylvia sydney grandma wants him to be there to queen the, to sign autographs so basically he's just going to be a kind of an olympian in residence at the ski resort as far as i can work out because you know i i i don't understand yeah. i mean he i mean that would that would work because you you know you have x amount of clout hey yeah, this will be your teacher, your ski instructor. Yes. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm sure that yeah, that's why not. That, that totally that totally makes sense. When when finally the Yeti who has been just eaten on occasional people here and there, finally for reasons that have nothing to do with anything, it's just moving it along, he decides to attack the high school. Um at that point, that, yeah, go ahead. That is the weird thing is we never, and, you know, I don't have to have the, I don't need to know, you know, where the Yeti went to high school and stuff like that. But <laughs> I, we never do get a good sense of why he's all of a sudden guns a blazing for, for the ski resort. Well, is he tired of yeah, the, maybe he he's just tired of the, uh, of, of the festival? Like, <clears throat> I don't know the festival. This is it. This year? This, this movie is like, like the Grinch. Is this this movie isn't overly interested in explanations? It's, no, and that's it, fine. I don't need like I would I would rather have more to my imagination. That's fine. But there's never a thing. Maybe maybe it is like all right. I've had enough of Whoville. It's time to rip rip people apart and chew on their skulls. I've, the way a Roger Corman movie it. would explain it. They would say that he has been up super duper high, but uh, ecology environmental whatever has has driven out his natural food supply yeah but none of that's here it, none it, of it's here this was a robert right. if, 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 I'm, if <laughs> this was a roger corman movie uh it this i think the the more likely explanation was would just be he's you know the you festival this is the last festival man he i've probably I've, hadn't eaten had people it. before and then he was like oh people are good i want more people yeah. <laughs> that's true I, yeah but he's had enough like i got another explanation Sure. Which is that they've worked backwards. The act, the the writer, looking at the outline of Jaws, says there comes a point when um, first where nobody believes in it, and so uh, the the town fathers have decided to keep it quiet. But then a very public thing happens, and so then they have to arrange, uh, you know, an expedition to go get the creature, and that's and the, and so they think and they think, and then they go, well, I, I don't know, what if it's a, like a dance at the high school, and they go, okay. And so that's what you've got. I, I honestly, that's what it is. Because unlike the beach, he, it easily could have been he could. They're doing a winter festival with races. He could have just wandered out onto the slope and yeah, attacked a bunch of people. It's but, really weird, actually. The more we think about it, it's really weird <laughs> that they never have a scene where lots of people are on the slopes because that would have been it's 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 crested butte, obviously. And like I say, those those ski slopes where they were should have been really crowded. So I guess they just didn't want to deal with the liability maybe but there should have been a scene with tons of people on the slopes like there are like in better off dead or whatever you know where you got tons of people yeah. on the slopes and then you just see the creature it doesn't have to see the creature with the people you can see the creature you know off to the side that just, is like, a really lurking. curious question not, as to how the heck they did this because usually you would send like second unit you would just go even yeah. if you blocked it off for you know x amount of weeks to film it yeah you would usually send like a second unit out there to to just hey give me some Give me some coverage of a lot of yeah. people doing ski stuff, especially given how many ski like skiing mon montage moments yes. there are. In this yeah, movie. no, they closed. They clearly used some kind of uh, maybe closed off slopes or something, and nobody was ever there, which is just an odd choice. It could be. Well, the it's because the it's because it's because the Bigfoot yeah put up all the signs. I mean, yeah. it could be in the days <laughs> leading up to the, 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 you know, the season hasn't begun yet or the season has just ended. No, it's, no. You know, 
it's none none of the above. It's super powdery, and there was winter festivals going on. So, like, if you're talking about the actual Crested Butte, that it, as long as there's snow, there's going to be skiing. And for the movie's purposes, this I'm is just trying to figure out where they time. when they filmed it. Basically, is how they managed to they get it. They so filmed it when empty. it was incredibly freaking cold, which means people would be skiing because people are stupid and they ski. So I can't much. explain at all how they did it. Maybe yeah. they just maybe they just spent a lot of money to close the resort for but a couple why? days again. Like I'm no, I, I, don't like, when, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Whatever, it's fine. I, a, a a person who is familiar with with uh, TV budget film production would be totally welcome to write into us, or or call in, or send us a voice text through Facebook yeah, the only and explain thing I can everything is we're getting wrong. They didn't want the liability of having le- non hired people, and they didn't want to pay to have a bunch of ski extras. That's all I can yeah. figure. they've already cast it with a bunch of human giant skiers, which is which is super weird. I, again, they're all they're all skier do you know how rare that is like you know pick like three random actors in hollywood and say hey you ski and you know <laughs> everyone will say yes but when you get out there that's that's the thing anyway um so uh yeah the, well, after the attack on the high school uh which they film as best they can that they don't want to have this creature actually like running through the court because they they just need they need to keep him off the screen because even if they have a full body suit it's not one that's going to stand up to scrutiny and so instead what it you actually do actually is... looks pretty good for the amount of screen time that they have of it though I agree for a TV budget like I don't know yeah. how it would have um how it would have worked if they had um let lingered on it too much presumably not very good because otherwise they would have done that yeah but um what little we see of the monster i i think it looks pretty damn good well and it's a good freaky scene because he busts through the windows and everybody just freaks out and so then they're like all right for uh somebody go hunting and so the the sheriff goes and kills a grizzly bear i mean they talk to the sheriff and they say there's a monster out there and the sheriff goes Okay, that sounds freaky, but we're gonna go up and take care of business. And they come back with a with a grizzly. Ne- never mind that the the arm and everything is all that wispy. It's like a yeti, right? White white fur, <laughs> and they're they're basically just like, oh no, this is you know the standard uh, mass hypnosis, yes, mass, uh, hysteria. Yeah, you didn't you saw a bear paw? You didn't see a white gigantic yeti arm. <laughs> <laughs> wispy yeti fur trailing off of it you what you saw was a grizzly at yeah. least a bear makes more sense than a monkey like like for the abominable <laughs> Felt like that's true last time. yeti right. yeah um but this is again recreating a story beat from jaws where they brought in a, a smaller shark because they and and the funny thing is they even say because then uh bo Svensson goes up to the sheriff and goes well how about we cut it open and see what it's been eating and they this movie oh, i don't know well no i mean that movie that scene took place mostly off screen right it was brilliant but they don't have time to recreate that scene from jaws um i think, no, I, think he just, I think they decide not to do that right well basically they just skip it all and the sheriff goes all right fine if you insist yeah, that yeah. there's still a yeti up there then let's get let's let's kick this tv film yeah. into high gear and get a okay. winnebago and go up and 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 kill the yeti and the journalist is coming so so now that she's that, a bigfoot it, expert because she did the that's right the she's expose. the bigfoot expert thank you yes ah oh, you see the intricate locking mechanisms of the screenplay how it all comes <laughs> together that she is a bigfoot because she produced a show about bigfoot um so they all by the way I, i'm seeing that scene on my screen right now and i just again want to note that Yvette Menu is wearing, uh, let's see, she's wearing a big wool sweater over a knit sweater, over another knit sweater, over a turtleneck sweater, over what I have to presume is probably a t-shirt under that. That's an amazing amount of layering. And I, and I, it's, it's so real. You never see people dressed like this in the movies. Her breath practically freezes into icicles and falls on the yeah, ground in front degrees, of her. Man. Yeah. I like that they also bring, uh, you know the sheriff to their uh you know reconciliation party yes <laughs> right weird awkward like i'm sure there's plenty of time where he's listening to the discussion going should i even should i even be here? be here i know we're hunting yetis but it's it's campfire time and and clearly these people have something there's a lot of unresolved things that i don't think uh, a sheriff <laughs> 
can help with. <laughs> Maybe that's why the um, the the, the uh, Bigfoot targets the sheriff because he's like, "You don't belong here. You're you're interrupting the." the you three. lift right out, says the Bigfoot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> they they have these big ass rifles, um, and and they go out in their in their awesome camper and they and they camp all night and then um, there's a there's a moment by yeah. the way in the in this that I thought was fascinating where yeah. um, apparently uh, Robert Logan and Yvette Namu have been standing guard. And I guess Bo Svensson was either sleeping or he's inside making breakfast. He comes out, they're standing together. They're both holding rifles. The actors, the actors, the human actors holding guns turn around and Yvette Namu points that rifle at Bo Svensson's torso, not thinking just casually. And Robert Logan moves his arm so damn fast to grab her rifle and push it towards the ground. Yeah, it is yeah. <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> and yeah. I and it cuts real, real, real fast. And I guarantee. Well, and apparently you in the TV version, you don't even see that that, that part. Like they what? cut that out. Oh yeah. my goodness! So, so other people IMDb. have have noticed this before. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. In the IMDb, it says that that uh, that, that 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 part's not evident in the TV version. Yeah, I mean, it, and you know, uh, yeah. So. Good on good on Robert Logan. Just be paying attention to, to safety on set. Um, so anyway, at, at just about that moment, the Bigfoot knocks over a bunch of logs to try so to. So that's yeah. the one thing that I like all the business. There's a lot of really cool business with them talking and kind of hashing things out in the yeah. camper. There's you know they're smart enough to to lay out when they're gonna watch and that all a <laughs> that all goes to the wayside when a we realize they parked under uh near a whole log yeah. thing that they can that the bigfoot can can <laughs> send careening to them also as soon as they dodge the logs they all had rifles yeah and then yeah, all of thank you for bringing weird. that up no one has rifles by that. No that one was else. so weird. It, 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 it's weird. <laughs> like, well, and the way that it, the logs, like, and the way that the logs fall in. Oh, that's, into that's the cabin. There's a couple of continuity so, problems camper. with this. Yes. So the yeah, logs. Yeah, there's two. Strange. It just that part. Like again, you know, I'm not a huge. Just, oh, let's pick this to death. But the, the, there's a lot of stuff that happens. That's I. I get that the logs would all knock the Winnebago. I mean it. But sure. once we get, once we we see the aftermath, either a everybody's just chucked their rifles, I guess, under the logs for some reason, right. and b all the logs have somehow, you know, half the logs have found their way into the <laughs> Winnebago yeah. to so smash weird. the poor sheriff in yeah. a way that is Final Impossible. Destination, and it's <laughs> yeah. yeah they would have to. Final- have- you know, oh, here's, no the, here's the thing about this, the, the last act that, that bugs me in retrospect. Like, I understand the sheriff being there because he's the sheriff, even though he was the one that trying to convince everybody that it was a fucking bear. Um, yeah. These people have money. Why don't they actually just hire a professional hunter to go kill yeah. the thing? <laughs> That's TCB, I- man boy i would have loved that oh my god thank you yes you're right it would have been great to have a captain quint of bigfoots to come in i guess i guess that's supposed to be i can trap him yeah i guess that is why they have him out there yeah gar yeah because he said he was like he used to be a uh, but then he 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 qualified to track a wild that is even if he's a good shot that doesn't make him qualified to track a wild animal that's absolutely right well and they obviously don't need to track it because it just finds them wherever they go yeah really right yeah i mean he even says we're just gonna wait right here yeah it's, it comes back it's, it, it makes a lot more sense than following him around the they mountain. say that after gonna... they give us like five screen minutes of them just tooling around on fairly yeah i was ground like what do they think they're gonna find this is a huge mountain <laughs> yeah but that's what it... i said that's what i said other oh, guys like Oh, the town is un- unprotected now. I'm going to go down to town. <laughs> I'm going to take this Winnebago into the town. <laughs> and it's so weird, too, the way they do the log thing. Because when we see the aftermath, there's logs just shoved every which way into the back of the... Yeah, Link so Which doesn't... So you know, you could have just had the sheriff ejected from the camper and then rolled over by the logs. Or trapped you know what from the I think the logs. must have happened? And it must have been Tony that they shot those two things independently without bothering to even check how they were aligned. 
it must, but it, must be. but it is i mean it does make it kind of interesting and poignant where he's trapped in there and they have to yeah. go hey man we're gonna have to leave you and then of course the bigfoot goes awesome sheriff <laughs> dinner I'm, I'm hungry already <laughs> and you know that because they don't want to leave him but yeah they're also easily chased away by it which they probably wouldn't have been if they just held on to their weapons which they were all holding Seriously. yes right like a minute before that's yeah, that, yeah, that whole continuity thing. just doesn't. That's a shame too, because yeah. it, if they had left, just left their rifles in the Winnebago, cool in the game. Yeah, if they, if they, sh- even if they showed them dropping them because they had to dodge out of the way, that's. But none of it lines up. Yeah, and that's yeah, a simple insert. I mean, I don't have to have the perfect movie, but it is annoying, yeah. kind of as a. If you, well, okay, you so I, do, I will explain it this way. They appear to be cooking when the logs start rolling down. So I think the idea is that they set the rifles down next no, no, to but, the Winnebago, and then it, it rolled over on top of the rifles. I but I rewound it because I was like, did I miss something? Did they throw them? Like what happened? And they're just they have rifles, and then they dodge out the and way, and then there are no rifles. And then but later her on, explanation they have to come back. is that they were on the other side of the thing, and they got they got pinned underneath. That's what she says later. Because because mm, they yeah. said because they say, are there any inside? where are the rifles she's like well they were on the other side of the thing and yeah. then they're like okay, and there are right. some inside that they're you know extra rifles right. and in, in the words of donovan those. first there is a rifle then there is no rifle <laughs> there is then there is <laughs> yeah so anyway effectively though plot wise what it does is it means they've now whittled out whittled down their their uh Resource. weapons because yeah, yeah. they go uh hey event menu go into the truck and see if you can find another rifle i guess she finds one and uh and she doesn't seem to be also... troubled at all by the blood that must have been there from right. the sheriff and she's 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 past it now yeah and uh and she also let's see robert logan finds the handgun that belongs to the sheriff and tosses it to bo svensson who catches it and heads up into the uh, into the woods yeah, well also at that point bigfoot finally recognizes that humans have rifles or have, <laughs> have guns you know what Once i would have loved shot, he starts running away like leave. oh Crap! I forgot <laughs> humans have guns. This is I would have loved good. if Bigfoot also had guns. I think that would be amazing. They, they should have had a a shootout between Bigfoot and. I love that. <laughs> oh my and goodness! Can you, can you imagine them. what a great moment? Like in a, maybe it has to be a different movie, but he grabs the rifle instead of just breaking it. He looks at it and then shoots somebody with it. <laughs> that would be yes. so great. Because usually it's like, oh, it's an animal and he's going to break the rifle. He's mad. He's angry. And then just looks at him and goes, oh, cool. Thanks for the rifle. <laughs> just <laughs> unloads. That would be insane. Uh, this is... Uh, so Robert Logan does get a shot in. So so uh, Bigfoot is is damaged and he's wandering around and he's going to try POV to... POV Bigfoot at this point. Yeah, that's right. It's all POV Bigfoot whenever we get a hold of Bigfoot from he's, here on he's, out. He's spewing a blood trail that they're able to track, and uh, Bo Svensson is cross country skiing around to see if he can find him. Um, and then it all just, the, I mean, it kind of decides, well, I guess we're more or less done because finally he just makes a, the Bigfoot makes a run for Bo Svensson. He's like, I'm going to get him. And that actually plays like Jaws. It really does. He just kind of circles around for a super long time and then he just starts well, running towards this. Him. This, I know, I, I, like. Even the thing with the bear, this drinks so deeply from the Jaws well that I have to believe <laughs> that they that were was very going poetic, to, Drew. Yeah, yes. yeah, I think they have to be going to the screenwriter and saying, okay, we need you to rip off these story beats from Jaws. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you if you're... I, I can only think that's correct. I can only imagine that's that's right. You know, if you're making this TV movie, I don't know why you wouldn't say. Well, you he's, know, we, he's need a, we need a, we need we need this, yeah, and then go for that, right? He's probably having to bang out this this script pretty fast, and maybe for not that much money. So you know, I can dig it. Or or maybe you just go. Why not have a why not have a Jaws on TV? Follow the beats. Yeah. Why follow why exactly the beats? Yeah, yeah. There, I mean, there, there, there's there's a chance that studios going, we needed this and don't give me any guff. There's also a chance that, you know, the job is make a Bigfoot Jaws. We need to, we need it on the air by, you know, this date. And you want, you you want to hear make something interesting? Uh, the, the, another reason you would do that, Jaws itself did not make it to television. This blows my mind really now. 
until the end of 1979. So like it had been out oh, wow, yeah. for four years, but in the only, you know, just people's memory of seeing it on TV. So yeah, you could borrow all the beats. Hell yeah. You know, and um, yes. So he makes a run. Because for also, Vincent. yeah. And you, oh, you hit ahead, it on sorry. the head too, because at the time, you know, for the most part, if you want to go see Jaws, you had to wait till it just came back around in the circuit. Yeah, that's right. So if you're going to sell somebody on, hey, did you like Jaws? Well, you can't go see Jaws. You're at home watching TV. Right. Here's, would you watch this Jaws Bigfoot thing? Of course. <laughs> because it's been months to years since you've seen Jaws because it's not even available really yeah. in any mass market. I mean, people have, there's ways to watch things outside of its theater run. But I most mean, I'm sure people, if you're in Hollywood, most is, of America you know, doesn't have that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. ABC. Is there it's a way ABC. to see how, is there a way to look back and see how well this did? Like, as far as, mm, um, I, I mean, I don't like, is, maybe there's a Nielsen ratings clearing house. Uh, that would be interesting. I don't have any information on that, but I could probably find out. Uh, we, we, I'm sure that I'm sure that we could find out. Uh, I will tell you that the reviews were not very good because people thought that it was, you know, a Jaws ripoff. Uh, but uh, the, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that that's entirely if, like, even though I've I've made my own comments about this being a Jaws ripoff, I don't think that that's entirely fair because like okay like think about like alligator and stuff like yeah. that there's like a, there's yeah. a ton a ton of movies that are essentially jaws rips off ripoffs but they're still entertaining like yeah like razor razor razorback is, <coughs> is one from the 80s and i never get tired of watching that movie so oh no like, I, I i don't see it as a i'm also you know what i don't have anything about either. like at the time I don't have anything on that, but you know what? If I find something like that, I'll uh, I'll share it with you guys and post it on the Facebook page. That's a really we could almost do an entire retrospective of just Jaws ripoffs. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because I would love to do James Franciscus in that that um, giant shark thing that he did in Italy for sure. Absolutely. Oh, and yeah. Did we ever do Piranha or is that? Yeah, remember. we did Piranha and we Piranha, did Piranha. Too, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know there are more things in heaven and earth ratio than piranha well there's like, there's we, also we, yeah. shaw the korean like you know mutant killer pig movie which okay is, i mean it's right there it's like yeah look it's pig jaws okay yes <laughs> right? like, that's 2009 so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. why not I guess I, I I love this idea. Um. Okay. So, uh, the way that Bigfoot he's already wounded, presumably, and uh, it's not helpful. Uh, you know, Bo Svensson is not able to to stop him running towards him at full speed with shots from the handgun that he has. So instead, um, Bo like just creates a a battering ram of sort. I mean, he he takes his ski pole and he jams it against the tree while the yeah. creature is running towards him, and I guess impales turns into him a it. spear basically. turns it into a spear uh with the tree backing it up because right. bo svensson's very big but he's not going to physically overpower a bigfoot um you know unlike steve austin for instance and well i was uh, actually thinking <laughs> after credit sequence that we didn't get to see is them looking over the cliff that the bigfoot falls over and suddenly uh the his, the, the the wife goes you know we can rebuild him we have the technology. <laughs> and this is actually the origin story of bionic bigfoot bionic bigfoot idea. yeah oh gosh i love that but they they get a lot of play actually out of that cliff that leads down like a, yeah, they do. a stream. So they keep coming back to it. Only this time they force a bigfoot down it. You know the yeah. the, the, the so we uh, have to wait. <laughs> we have to wait it, till Snow Beast Four, where yeah. the the bigfoot chases them to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think they retrieved the body because like these people would have effectively proven that bigfoot exists? It's a really good yeah. question. I they yeah. look at you know. The final scene looks like they're about to go, well, I mean, it's too far down for us to go get a Bigfoot. I guess let's just go back home. Like <laughs> that sure seems that way. Bigfoot doesn't way they, exist the after looking, all. Yeah, they're like, well, uh, that's a long way down. I don't think it's worth us fine, like yes. bringing a Bigfoot Yeti back Yeti is down. only a legend. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That's so right. Yeah, I, I, I All of these questions are, are wonderful questions. Man, are there more of them? That's something else I got to ask. 
what is you know are there more of this bigfoot like well there's uh, there's hundreds of bigfoot running walking all across well, the right. country that's right that's what goes fenson says you know right. so yeah so the so secret what we don't know is the secret is post fenson's actually part of the whole thing is both Vincent's actually was a Bigfoot. They just shaved him. Uh, they shaved him. <laughs> and that's part of also why his wife is like, you know, he used to be a Bigfoot when I did that expose. And I feel like <laughs> that's he's when less I fell of in love Bigfoot. with you, but now you just look like a regular person. Now you just look like a really huge She's a human. she's a furry. Yes. Yeah. Now you just look like a really huge human and uh, I don't know. <laughs> the funny thing is so <clears throat> A biathlon athlete, if any, if nobody's ever really paid attention to the Winter Olympics, and even if you have, I just want to say it because it's funny to say out loud. The biathlon is an event where a human being from a country, for reasons, gets on skis, skis super fast, stops, takes out a rifle, and shoots things. Yep. I cannot, for the life of me, imagine what the hell this, this event is for, <clears throat> other than James Bond movies. And it's just so... Yeah. Exactly. Strange. Like, why is it? I don't think hunting is a is an Olympic sport. Well, I mean, I, I marksmanship certainly is, but ski real fast and then no. I, and I, I might guess. I mean, but I'm saying this is more like yeah, hunting. This, European this, countries be where skiing and hunting are together. Yeah, especially. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so it's, but still, that's super cool, right? And, and and one imagines that you can create great soldiers on skis if if you know you have. So I. Would would presume since they keep mentioning that he's a marksman, but also he was up on the skis that he's a biathlon athlete. No, he and, said that. He said it. Oh, he said he biathlon. Said he, yeah, he goes. Well, he didn't say biathlon. He goes, "Are you? How's your marksmanship?" And he goes, "You mean on the slopes?" So right, I mean, right, he right. definitely was like, "Okay, yes, that. thank, thank you, thank you for connecting the dots for me." Okay, so anyway, that's an ideal Bigfoot hunter, but. I loved, I was just listening to you guys talk and I was thinking it'd be even funnier to have a Bigfoot in the biathlon. That is a wonderful idea. If they gave a Bigfoot this guy's yellow and blue outfit, you know, because again, picturing I mean, the Bigfoot from Bigfoot and Wild Boy, how cool that would be. But I mean, the name of the movie is just Bigfoot Biathlon. Like, you don't even <laughs> have to go anywhere with it. Just, it sounds, it alliterates nicely. <laughs> I mean, how much better alliteration do you need than Bigfoot Biathlon? Seriously. I don't, I, that is wonderful. I don't even know what the plot of that movie is, but it's amazing. It, it's exactly <laughs> what it says. There's no, there's zero ambiguity. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you need, you need, you know, you need drama between them. Like, like, uh, you know, Bigfoot hasn't been up on his skis in 15 years. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. In, <laughs> because of all the Mavericks. Or, or, or. <laughs> They try to teach. They have to, you know, the Bigfoot's good at hunting. Right. Uh, he has learned to use a gun, but right. skiing, he's not so great at. The so biathlon you need team a to come back out of retirement and teach a Bigfoot how to teach a Yeti how to ski. Well, yes, it. because the biathlon team is like in, you know, Norway for the Winter Olympics. And they and and they have a pet Bigfoot that they picked up back in the seventies. But now somebody's been injured, and the rules don't say that a Bigfoot. No, he's not even a pet; he's just their friend. Right? Rules don't say a Bigfoot can't compete. No, that's the, the other. Well, that's the tension that leads you to the third <laughs> act. Is they at first deny the big? They deny ah, our yes. Bigfoot from going into the Olympics because he's a Bigfoot. But there's a loophole right. from the sixty-four Olympics or whatever. I don't know. Yes, I don't. I don't keep up with the years, but you know the Winter Olympics from the sixties. The Airbud Olympics somehow. Yes. So yeah, fascinating. Is a uh, they put biathlon. I love that. Idea. Come on, Lava Shark Productions. <laughs> gonna... You must Ready. write these things down, okay? I have a little app That's on my what phone podcast where, I, is for. where I write. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I don't ever remember which. I mean, I guess this no, one's easy. Like Bigfoot Biathlon is we definitely need... going to go with Snow Beast. But we need, that, we, need intern. we need a new intern just to do the metadata yeah. for our show. Yeah, honestly, yeah. you can keep track uh, we, of, of. We need ideas. an intern to go through and and write down all our ideas. Yes. From the so, um, lava okay. shark, and fire shark. Uh, I I have no idea where to go from there. Actually, that's the end of the movie. So, yep. um, we should get our final thoughts. And then come around to our endorsements. So, as uh, usual, we have now spoken about the movie as long as the movie was, or longer. Absolutely, I think as long. Yeah, but yeah, the sure. people who made the movie didn't think of Bigfoot Biathlon, so I feel all right. I, I actually, I think that's, I honestly, I have gotten paid for lesser ideas, <laughs> so you should hold on to that one. You can consider it. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, okay. Um, Julia, we have spoken about Snow Beast. And uh, honestly, it's a, high, it's a high water mark in my life. I, I feel... I feel like like this has been a very joyful moment to get my excellent friends, all of you together to talk about Snow Beast. So it's been good for me. So Julia, what are your final thoughts? Um, I felt like I was watching a project by by people, my friends of my parents, basically, because, you know, it was just so funny to see, like, first of all, because we know the, the place, like we know, you know, it's Colorado. We've been to Crested Butte. We don't know it well, but we've been there. Um, and then all the clothes and the fact that these folks are, are parents age. So when you were saying all this about all the people are still alive, I'm like, well, yeah, they're our parents age. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just like, it's, it just seemed like kind of, um, you know, very familiar in that way. Um, it's, you know, it, uh, it has its problems as we've discussed, but I really thought the story, I thought the relationships were really interesting. Like I thought it was very kind of fun to, to talk through all the different um, dynamics between the, the three leads and then the grandma and the sheriff all that um so i think it's been i think the conversation has been even more fun than the movie was but the movie was fun thank you very very much uh tony what are your thoughts uh yeah i i really like this movie i like it schlocky goodness yeah. um even the parts that you know i was a little critical of continuity wise and, and logic wise it's fine it's, it's a bigfoot chasing people around a ski resort movie you know? <laughs> That's fine. Uh, made for TV, Bigfoot chasing around movie. So yeah, I mean, I and because of that, it's got some really cool uh, performances, some really good character bits. I I enjoy this kind of stuff, and I will watch a lot of it. You know, much some people that's not your bag. Uh, that's fine. I think you know if you're listening to us this far in, unless you're yeah. fairly new, if you've been with us a while, you'll know that of course. Snow Beast is something we're going to watch when we do a, uh, you know, Beasts in the Snow <laughs> retrospective, for lack yeah. of a better term. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I I think it's cool. I had a lot of fun watching it. And I, you know, I could watch more of this stuff at any given moment. And hey, you know, T.R. Sloan is the hero in this. The T.R. Sloan from the movie, I might add. Death Ray 2000. <laughs> and yeah, it's got, it's cool. I, I, yeah, you don't have to twist my arm very far to say, oh, made for TV, Bigfoot movie from 77. I'm there. This was uh, a, I, I have an answer for you, by the way. This was the number one rated show of the week. Just well, there you so, go. Yeah. Because yeah. why wouldn't it be? Right. <laughs> Bigfoot Mania Plus. It's, and it's been a year since, unless you saw the rerun, it's been a year since you've watched In Search of, at this point point in time yeah. if you're up watching this it's been a year since you've watched in search of and the six million dollar man with bigfoot yeah sign me up it's been you know quite a while since you've probably seen jaws as well so go it's, for it it's so funny because that that year begins with the number one uh you know typically it's like happy days and and fit big shows but if it's a mini series like the year begins with roots which is as as deep and mature as you can get and then in april it's no beast <laughs> I never, and I, you know, I have enough respect to not suggest that Roots needed a Bigfoot in it. Right. But that would be disrespectful. But the previous week was Laverne and Shirley. Uh, and the following week was Laverne and Shirley. So, so that's the, that's the universe that you're living in, you know, and wow. Wow, man. Um, Roots, Laverne and Shirley and Snow Beast. Uh, thank you, Tony. Drew, what are your final thoughts? I kind of agree with Tony. I think that this movie is about as good as it needs to be. It's entertaining. It's, you know, it was a TV movie, so it was sort of meant to be disposable. I don't think in anybody's imagination they thought that, like, you know, 40 odd years later that there would be a group of people on the internet because they didn't have the internet first of all but uh you know a group of people dissecting this movie in the 21st century you know this exists in it's it, the vacuum of of what these these uh these movies were meant for and i found it entertaining you know we've done quite a bit of tv movies now on on this show some of them are, are pretty good like Jack and then a lot of them are bad this this one kind of falls in the to me for in more of the good you know it's not great Kolchak is is great this is mm -hmm. this is 
it clips along it's entertaining it's a good it's a good monster movie it didn't it wasn't shooting for anything more than that and it gets the job done yeah and, it, and also in in universe 479 Three seven two. Uh, hmm. It also spawned bonded by Bigfoot. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, what would we be without that one season of of that show? Oh, yeah, so much. That's that. It's that's basically Harry and the Hendersons, but with like Three's Company. So it, that, that's, uh, that... more. I mean, it's more soapy than that. But you know. Okay, fair. Yeah, um, with wow. Falcon Crest, but once spawned from Bigfoot. <laughs> um. All right. I. I'm so happy we watched this i actually don't have anything that i would add to all of that other than thank you very much and colorado really is that beautiful so if you get a chance you should go um yeah crest of butte west of here uh so let's do endorsements i i um I, i'm dying to know what we only met a couple days ago so don't feel pressured if you, if you can't think of anything extra that's that's totally fine i might let julia talk for me because I think we've only we've been watching exactly the same thing. We, we spend like every waking hour together. But uh, so, Julia, do you have anything to endorse this week? Well, you know, it's funny. <clears throat> we started watching um, Peacemaker yes. and it is hilarious. It's made me laugh a lot. It's not something that I normally would love because it is raunchy and gory. Um, however, it's so funny. It's just so funny. So I'm going to say that if you're okay with a little bit of gore and a lot of raunch, then Peacemaker's very funny. Um, John Cena is hysterical. He's so good. He's so talented. And if nothing else, watch the opening dance sequence because the opening is like like a TikTok, like a long TikTok dance. It's very funny. So I don't know. I think that's that's the thing that these last few days I've been watching. Um, Prior to that, I went and saw The King's Man in the theater a little while ago, um, and that was entertaining. Um, it's not as good to me as The King as, as the King's Men, which is what the original movie was. This is a prequel to that, but it is entertaining and interesting, and I love Ray Fiennes. So, um, so yeah, those are mine. Fantastic. Tony, I mean, do you have anything to I assume you've been watching Peacemaker. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, especially at its kind of deconstruction, because, you know, Cena's kind of off-screen swagger is often his on-screen swagger. Yeah. Right. And you might like that or you might not. I have have a friend who was like, nope, I'm out. It's him. I don't like it. Like, I'm like, okay, that's cool. But what's kind of magic about it, in addition, of course, to the intro, which (laughs) is great, and and Gunn has said, like, I I want people to watch this. I want it to be funny and fun because I want people to watch the credits so that people know who makes this awesome show. And that's really cool. Uh, And it is... I don't want to overhype it, but it does live up to the hype. But I like also that it is a deconstruction of exactly who this, you know, over-the-top, you know, guy who's willing to kill any, you know... Peace, uh, peace by killing any man, woman, or child who would stand against peace. (laughs) (laughs) Which I, you know, and those first three episodes, I laughed. It it is like Julia said. Like, there's a lot of there's a subsection of people that's definitely like I don't think Rain is down for the raunch and the gore that's Mm -hmm. in it. But I went in with I didn't know exactly what to expect because that character was funny, but I was I don't know, is this the character really out of all the ones in the Suicide Squad that we're gonna pick? And just judging by just all the characters together, his supporting uh actors and actresses, his support team (laughs) is also amazing. So I I I have I laugh my ass off. I have a question. Is there something about John Cena that I don't know? Because like the only thing that I really know about him outside of his wrestling career and now his movie career is like I know that back a while I guess it was a year or so ago he donated a million dollars to Lives Matter which kind of sounds awesome so no I think it was more of the, this the friend of mine who didn't like it is just not is it like his him, wrestling like, persona that yeah he yeah, yeah like okay. yeah and it's just the way he approaches things yeah. look I, I think he works in this because he looks like a comic book character mm-hmm. he looks insane he, he, he looks uh, it, it's uh, and i mean that in a good way i mean he's he's perfect for this 
it, it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's it is great. so funny. Like I, I was talking yeah, exactly. to a, fr- a friend of mine today who said that his was on the fence about it, even though she, you know, genuinely kind of likes comic book based stuff. And I said, sell her on the humor. Don't sell her oh, on yeah. it, the, 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 anything else. Because I said, that's really the strength like of it is that it's just ridiculously funny and Mm -hmm. you know good good dialogue it's still i think the closest and i wish we had it to the justice league international uh which is one of my favorite runs of comics like the oh, yeah. reintroduction of Justice League International yeah, that's right. blended like so much drama and humor together. Yeah. And it's still one of my favorites. And I think so far, there's stuff that's kind of touched it, but this is the closest to that mix of kind of deadpan, but then also like over the top humor and just like hitting those beats with the well, drama. Also, the, the work, yeah. the workplace. Also yeah. the workplace yeah. aspect of it, that they're doing this like weird job. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're, they're still well, like the same petty office arguments. Yep. And there's some yep. great characters. Um, <clears throat> I really, really love the character of um, uh, Leota, I guess is her name. Uh, she's so fun. The, 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 the lesbian character. She's so funny and awesome and sweet. And I just adore her. She's my favorite. And then Robert Patrick is so loathsome and like, just you really, 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 really hate him. A He's lot. kind of corn. The, the market on bad dad roles. In yeah. Seriously. He's wonderful. <laughs> That's true. You know, I, do, do you think one thing I think about this is, is in a way you can go deeper and get more interesting commentary on stuff by going through the humor route and then getting into, you know, and then going, yeah. hey, this guy's a KKK guy, then the other way around, you know, where it's a very special episode. You know, yeah, we if, should if, say, oh, we should have introduced, hey, there's spoilers because that's a. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Too. Yes. Like, well, you might wanna... No, but he's a racist from the get go. Like, you know, he's racist. Yeah, but I, you, you, you know, pretty, you, you, you don't know that he's a, a basically a super villain right <laughs> off, but like he's, he's a bigot. He's a bigot pretty much. From what, the, he's horrible to his the, son. He's awful. Yeah. No, he's just an awful character. Um, I mean, he's a great character, but, but he awful. thinks, but okay, but he thinks right, every, yeah. e- but he thinks every man should get scabies at least once in his life. <laughs> yeah, the payoffs on the post credit scenes are also very good. Yeah. What are the post credit scenes? Do I need to no, go we, back? Yeah, you, saw, you need to go. It. You need to go back and watch those if you did. We may not have watched. I think we might have missed the first one, but we definitely have watched the other ones. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it all fine. Uh, Drew, do, well, Tony, I'm sorry. We gave oh, you well, the that, I mean, that it. has been <clears throat> it. And then I've also been watching uh, the Shaw Brothers box set, which I talked oh. about. And man, those movies look amazing. And, you know, they're in original. I mean, sound wise, they're all in the original mono soundtrack because that's how they were. <laughs> but uh, they sound great, too, even in, you know, original mono. But boy, oh, boy these movies look amazing so wow. that that's been my that's been and i saw uh, several other movies i was kind of disappointed in, and so i was glad that peacemaker hit right exactly where i needed it to wow. uh drew and, and by the way i wasn't planning on watching that show until you guys recommended it and then and then we did and i'm so happy <clears throat> True. What about you? Well, other than Peacemaker, which you know is obviously hilarious and awesome, um, I started the uh, the um, last season of the Lost in Space reboot that they did on Netflix. Mm. Um, it actually dropped back in December, but uh, we were not in the right mind to watch it. Now I mm-hmm. think I do because I need something a little bit more uplifting, and I. I just think that this is an unappreciated reboot in some ways. Like it seems to have fallen off the, like the first season, it seemed to be a hot topic on social media, but then it kind of seemed to, to fall off. And this is done so elegantly. The cast is great. It, the writing is great. It's, it's, it's a show that really shows a strong appreciation of, of science and science fiction and you know it's also just so ridiculously optimistic and wholesome which is kind of rare it's like kind of the polar opposite of um of uh peacemaker in some ways in what i but it's it's sort of what i needed right now um because i'm fighting off some depression and you know the, the the characters have this one motto where they constantly are saying well all problems have a solution and i i I sort of love that. And there's a scene in um 
the new season, which I don't want to say what it is, but it's such like a standout scene and which shows how much faith in science the show has. And that is so refreshing. And people, I think when they're watching it, they'll know what I'm talking about. But it's really good. And now all three seasons, if you've never watched it, all three seasons are now uh, running on Netflix. But I think this is like a good example of how a reboot can be both contemporary, but also still you know keep a lot of what was good about the original thing and, and still do its own thing so i i just love it very good thank you very very much um julia hit mine i i don't have anything else to share because this was a week of just just dealing with too much coughing and laying around so next week i intend to get get more into pop culture and thank god there was snow beast so so i i'm so thankful for all of this um gosh guys i don't know what we're watching next week I really don't. So we're going to have to talk about it online. I have no idea. But, I think uh, we managed around Crawling Eye. Well, the question was, are there any other Abominable Snowman movies that we would like to hit before? I don't we... know, but so far we're two out of two with none of them bouncing. Right. I but, have I mean... a I have a, recommenda- <laughs> I have a recommendation, but Take I have that, you, Cornelius. I have a recommendation. It's been a few years since I've seen it, but I remember it being okay. But we'll have that discussion okay. online. Yeah, let's let's do it. There's also a movie where Bruce um, Campbell is a terrorist in the Alps, and it might be interesting instead of a a snow beast you could just have you could have bruce campbell you know i forget what that's called and apparently it's terrible which might be wonderful um we'll discuss this we will completely we'll we'll discuss it online uh everybody be excellent to one another find joy in all the things that you can find joy in just like we found joy in this amazing movie stay healthy drink Mm -hmm. lots of tea with honey if your throat is hurting and Mm -hmm. um and we'll catch up with you next time bye everybody bye good night